I asked my dear friend before he died, David Aswear, you know, I said, David, you've been meditating for 40 some years. What's out there? And he said, nothing. There's nothing out there. And I have to meditate on nothing, which is heavy. <laughs>
all these things are tools. They're all tools that I create for that. Okay? None of them are sacred. None of them, whether it's the harp here or the ashimba, none of them are sacred. They're just tools for my getting to a place. The ashimba here, the xylophone, came because um, I was depressed. You know, this instrument here. I was depressed. All right? I was walking down the street, down on Canal Street, and I found these bars. Cut like this, except for this one. This, listen to them. They were all cut like that. I didn't tune them. Okay? And I, they were wrapped up in a bundle, and I put them on the floor where I lived on Canal Street. And Jimmy Hobbs, a drummer, walked by. He says, that's your future. Because he knew I was depressed. I'd come to New York, play piano with a band, and Cecil Taylor took my, took my band. He took Mark Edwards. He took, took David S. Weir. I didn't have a band anymore. And he just said to me, it's an opportunity. Don't see it as, as, as something that you've lost. This is an opportunity for the do you. You know? You know? Rejoice. You're free of them. <laughs> and um, he saw these, this wood and he says, that's your future. What I found out with instruments, if you put energy, just put energy into it. Just do it. You don't have to think about it. Just do it. This instrument is a tool, okay? Because when this came, I had a vision of what my life, future life was going to be. Understand? I built this instrument, and after I played it, I had a vision of what my future life was going to be. This, this is all about imagination because he was teaching me how to imagine, how to visualize my future. I said, I'd like to travel the world playing my instruments. I've traveled the world playing my instruments. And I said, I'd like to play for rich people and poor people all, all over the world. I've played for rich people and poor people all over the world. You know, in Moscow, in Ethiopia, in Mexico, in all of America, all over Europe, you know? Eastern Europe, Israel, all over. You know, because I had this vision. Wisdom Academy? Yes. Uh, is it, uh, Ms. 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 Zena? Yeah. Is she here? Yeah. No, this is what Sounds like this. Let me show you what three on top of four sounds like. Watch, watch what it sounds like. What this looks like, and then it sounds like this. Well, let's play it, right? Together, left, right, left, right, left. Together, left, right, left, right, left. Yes. Why is this important?
In Africa, we use them for rhythm and for drumming. You get your dance, you get your drumming from the numbers of two to three to four. It's more complicated to five to six. Three on top of four, four on top of five, five on top of six. It's more and more and complicated. That's what Africa has given the world. The rhythm from these numbers, the drumming from these numbers, the dance from these numbers. Europeans do not do rhythms like this. Europeans deal with harmony. is, is a, a very delicate, tender thing, and you have to nurture it. So in performance, we're trying to be true. When there's emotion in our performance, we're being true. Albert Eiler did it. Train did it. David S. Ware did it. Wim Parker does it. You know, I try to do it. Look at Monk. People say Monk was crazy. Well, he was, he was manic depressive, he was crazy. Monk had, had, had Nelly, right? Train was out there, but he had home. He had a home, you know? The people who didn't have that kind of security, you know, were out. I mean, they, they, they did drugs, they shot up, I mean, they were wild, they were crazy, you know? Many of them lived, didn't live too long, okay? So love, that's where love comes in. You need that love to heal you, to, 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 to give you that sense of security. And also, love is an example of, of, of where we're trying to, what we're trying to reach all the time. You know, you know, we're trying to reach that all the time. That's what's important. I'm 70 years old, I have to think, how much more time do I have here? You know, that mortal mortality thing. How much more time, how long are the hands, how long is the mind gonna stay sharp? When I was a younger person, it was like, well, then, uh, um, yes, it would be good to be, you know, in the magazines or have the recordings. And I've done all of that, so, you know, and you know what? That's nothing, that's nothing. People acquire all kinds of stuff. It's nothing, you know? Good people, being around good people, sharing is what's important. Love in your life is important. Good health is important. For me and my wife, it's been having time, not living on someone else's clock, not being a slave, you know? Most people alive are slaves. We are free people, you know? We've worked on how to have time. You know, our thing is, how do we live on less so that we can have more time? You know, time for what? Time to do nothing. You know, time to be quiet, to have the light come through, you know? To listen to those, those quiet voices of inspiration that come to you, which are always quiet. And as I said, there's never the big epiphany. It's always that quiet thing that kind of nags on you for a while. That says, hey, 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 come on, hey, listen to me. I've been telling you this for a year. Listen, listen. And you say, okay, I'll try it. And then boom, I told you. You better listen to me now.
Thank you.